Hi, I'm Marianne Oakes, and I'm a complex abdomen specialist at Regents Hospital in St. Paul. And today we're on series number two of our program where we're talking about kind of that, how do I do that at my facility? Um, and one of the things that we love to do on Fistula Fun Fridays is do hybrid dressings. And so why, why do we need a hybrid dressing? Well, because patients sometimes as we heal them, they contract, um, they kind of want to get to that next level where they're like a little bit, have a smaller pouch or something like that. It does a lot for their heart and it does, it's nice for us. Sometimes the smaller pouches cost less. Um, and so remember if you're on today's YouTube um, series to hit the subscribe button and become part of our fistula tribe, which is so fun. Um, you can also find more information at complexwounds.com. And so let's start today. I'm gonna share my screen. Episode two is the hybrid dressing. And so that's making big wound managers or pouches into smaller pouches by using other advanced wound dressings. So today, we're gonna to talk about, um, this is Big Mike, and he had a real big wound with a bunch of fistulas that are actually underneath my hand, but he wanted me to isolate this section that he called his dog leg so that he could get into the next smaller size uh, wound manager. And so this is me, I'm just using the barrier rings, kind of like we did for the sandwich technique, that was episode one, where you put the barrier rings down and then that kind of isolates a section. And then put a, I put a long-standing silver dressing in there so it could be changed on the you know Monday Thursday uh, pouch change, and then I just use some clear drape to cover the whole thing, and then the sandwich technique to hold the pouch in place, and then obviously the big lid on the top, and you can see his cute little fistula is all sticking out underneath there. Um, this is a 15 year old that was trying to go to prom or homecoming, I can't remember, and he had all these, he had a fistula and an ileostomy fistulas in here, but this whole big section was no fistulas, and so we just were isolating that by using a silver dressing, we used, I put some clear drape over it, did all the standard practices for um, the fistulas, and put them in a big pouching system, which made him very happy. So that brings us to today's patient. You can see he's got this big long incision, but he's only got a fistula right down here. <laughs> and so I am putting the berry rings in the sandwich technique fashion at the edge of the wound. Uh, so I'm pasting powder to the inside, but I have a silver dressing lining that upper wound. And then I'm building a little dam to isolate the silver dressing from the fistula effluent. And then you're putting your pouching system on so you can see the berry ring to the base. And then obviously paste and powder, and then he had an ileostomy downstream as well. So I was changing that for him. Okay, so this is the patient we're gonna do today. So now let's look down at the board. So now this is our patient today. And you can see here's his little fistula and his big long incision. And so I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna scrub him up with Vosh, right? Because I love that. And then I'm gonna protect his skin with this wand. And I love Cavalon Advanced, it makes a huge difference. And you can put it right over the wound itself and it really helps to keep a seal and keep that wound edge protected. And then I'm gonna use a longstanding um, silver dressing and cut it so that it lays right up through on my um, wound. So I'm gonna set that aside. And then I'm gonna cut my four inch barrier rings just like I've done in the sandwich technique so that I can put it around the, the wound and the fistula itself. And so you can see here, I'm just gonna set it back about a half of a centimeter all the way around the wound. Oh my gosh, good times in the basement. Sometimes at the base, I like to flip it like this. Kind of makes it easier to stretch along. Oh, that's so pretty. And then I'm going to finish this off here, I think. I think I'll just start from the side, why not, huh? Then all the way up and around this wound and back down, I didn't quite make it. And you can see I'm setting these barrier rings back about a half a centimeter from the wound um, skin junction because it really helps to get that seal. And then I usually take my scissor and kind of work this all in together, right? Let's all be friends. You have the whole thing around in berry rings. Then you're gonna take your little bridge here and you're gonna bridge across so that the effluent can't sneak up into that wound when you don't know it. So I'm gonna take 
one of these and put it right here where the wound gets deeper. Might even take another piece. Good thing I opened this other barrier ring. This makes it way easier. And it's nice to take away their food and drink before you start to do dressing changes because their effluent is not nearly as active and gives you a little bit more comfort in you know, doing all these steps. So once I get to that point, then I have to go back to the old technique of the sandwich technique, which was episode one, and take some paste and go along the inner border. And if this is painful, I like to use lidocaine beforehand. Kind of makes the patient tolerate the paste better. And so I'm just pasting that inside ring. You don't need a lot, just enough. Ooh, that looks beautiful. But then, you don't wanna forget about the outside. So you're gonna go all the way around the outside with paste too. This makes a nice false layer of skin that you really can work with. So now we wanna treat that wound on the upper part, right? So we're gonna put our silver dressing right into the wound. Sometimes I put it in dry, sometimes I pre-moisten. It kind of depends on how the wound is acting before I get there, but his wound was kind of, more wet, so I'm putting this guy in dry. Okay, so now we have to decide on pouches. So, you know, he's kind of right on the fence, but I feel like if I'm gonna measure him for this pouch, I'm not gonna be able to see the barrier rings at the top and the bottom. So, sorry, you don't get to come and play. So that probably means that this pouch is gonna be perfect. So this pouch looks like I can see the barrier rings on the bottom and the top and it's gonna work out great. Now you can freelance cut it, or you can kind of do a pattern. I do a little bit of both. There you go. And then there's the pattern. I should probably put my last on so I can see. All right, cowabunga. Okay, so now you can see the most important part is this one at the base because the poop ball runs downstream. So we want to put this down so we can see the barrier rings underneath on both edges and for sure at the bottom. And then just give it a little love, pat it down, pat it down, pat it down. And then you're going to cut some more of your fun barrier ring and you're going to sandwich it. You're going to sandwich that pouch between the two barrier rings. This is gonna give you that leak proof pouch that you're still looking for. And then I like to finish it off all the way around, top and bottom, right? Then you know what time it is, time for a little bit more paste. Seems like a lot of steps, but really it just doesn't take that long once you kind of get it down. And then you can be more generous with the paste, especially down here at the base on the second go round. The first one, you kind of want to keep it lean. The second one, you can be mean. And then my favorite part of the day. Yep, you know it, powder. The powder can go on the fistula. It's going to be fine. You just want to have enough on there so that the pouch lid doesn't stick. That's one thing. But also uh, that you get all those little micro leaks especially right down here. Ooh, that feels great. Oh my God, look at that cute little fistula. And then remember this pouch in particular is not a Tupperware top. It's a top that stretches around and on top. There we go, right? Around <laughs> and on top, click. There we go. And don't ever forget to do this because I have, makes people angry. And then to finish the rest of this, you can use, um, you know, whatever you want to cover this dressing, you could use a clear dressing right up and over the top, right? That's gonna be nice for the patient, very comfortable. You'll be able to see, you'll be able to watch your, your um, silver dressing in there to make sure everything's going well. And really that's the technique of, you know, it's really a combination of the sandwich technique and then just using your advanced wound dressings to this looks perfect, to um, allow your patient to be in maybe a little bit more sturdy of a pouch, um, maybe a little bit more um, inexpensive of a pouch. You can use a two-piece system if you'd like. And then you can just change that maybe twice a week and it's awesome, good times. 
All right, well, uh, that's it for today, Fish Chill Fun Fridays. And I just want to remind you guys to subscribe if you can, become part of the Fish Chilla Tribe, which would be great. And I hope that you find this helpful, honestly, and use it at your facility. And please reach out to me at any point if you have any questions um, through the, the complexwounds.com has a question and answer area. I'll get back to you as soon as possible and have a fun Fish Chilla Friday.